Hello everyone and welcome back to another round of Let's Make Hybrids. In the previous prompt we tackled seahorses, moths and butterflies and for this week we're looking into bears and plants. I would also like to say that I do apologise for not taking part myself in the last couple of prompts. I have unfortunately been just incredibly busy and unable to take part. But what I'd like to do in the future is still take part and make my own submissions for each and every prompt and just put together in a nice and big collection. That way I'm still involved, just uh, a little bit late, so I do apologise. But fortunately though, fortunately, we do still have a absolutely stunning collection of artwork of all various types, genres, themes, everything. And I'm really excited to share them with you all today. So for our very first one, a traditional art piece by Clover Sage. They did mention they're not very confident drawing bears, but I think that they did a fantastic job here. I just want to say I really like the coloration. I really like the green outline, which I know it might sound kind of simple, but it just adds like this much kind of softer feel to it. It makes it feel a bit more old school than just, you know, traditional paper, but like a far more old school kind of illustration-y thing. And I think that the reddish and brownish leaves as well that kind of adorn it here and there give like a really nice contrast and just really breaks it up. It also gives me a big forest spirit vibe as well. And following Clover Sage, we had the Witch Doctor with their Pitcher Plant Bear. I really, really love the way he's standing. I understand, obviously, a pitcher plant is quite tall, but just having the bear kind of, or the, the, the body, if you will, just kind of standing upright, just really perfect. It just sells the illustration really, really well. It looks kind of menacing. It's the kind of thing I can imagine appearing in some horror games. I just think this looks very, very eloquent. I absolutely just love the design of the head slash plant parts <laughs> and i also really love the textures i think all the variety and also just the shader shading technique of all the various gradients and colors it just all comes together really really lovely and i think witch doctor has an absolutely beautiful job in this one and next up we got is cutie by fridge master 27 so this one almost gives me a kind of a tribal vibe in a way definitely more of a spiritual kind of thing again but this one kind of makes me think of native indians and their totem poles and how they have like, these animal avatars and spirits it kind of reminds me of that and i really like it i also just like the expression and i think that the blue uh blue leaves maybe the blue leaves or blue hair on the head and the rear also just have like a really nice contrast not to mention all the thorns covering it as well and next up we got g gabriel bf with this really awesome looking one it's kind of interesting actually the way it's designed to have all these various trees on it, it makes the creature feel like could be this gargantuan titan but the way it's lurking among redwood trees that makes it feel either small itself or makes the trees themselves feel absolutely ginormous this for some reason just gives me like such a such a impression of scale and size not to mention i just really like the design itself i especially like the head the head you can really see all the bark a bit of the glowing as well in the eye and the mouth in fact it's got a bit of a bark texture throughout the entire thing i also just really like the texture and how it comes down to the hands and feet it really looks like roots and I just think it looks really cool and it's a really awesome idea of kind of combining the different themes together. And next up by Caprasuchus93 we have the trap bear. They mentioned they went with the MLP route for this one as they used the bugbear as inspiration. Along with the Venus flytrap and the two-mouthed woman from Japanese mythology. I can certainly see the resemblance and I completely forgot that bugbear was even a thing so I'm kind of surprised to have not seen that more. But I do like the overall design on this one. I do think that the large pincers at the front there are really quite intimidating, very scythe-like, and it really reminds me of certain carnivorous plants. Not to mention the head as well, which I think is a very cool combination of the two. And the large Venus flytrap head on the back as well, that looks intimidating. And following Capra Sutures, it's Arcane with their bear or bee bear. So as you can see on the back of this creature, it has infinite honey. I'm not sure if perhaps it produces it or it attracts the bees to produce it for them. I'm not sure, but I just think it's a really cool and creative idea. Another one I didn't think of, obviously, you know, bears and honey kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Especially as a bear plant hybrid. I think it's a very, very creative. Not to mention, I do really like the design itself. A very, very cute design. And I especially love the tail and all those little curly details as well. I think that's really, really nice. Plus a little tiny horns as well, just give it like just such a slight little deity vibe as well. And next up, we've got a small creation by Maver of the Swamp Bear thing. I believe Maver said it was based on Marvel. I'm not sure which Marvel character that is, but I do still like the design nonetheless. And I thought it's very clever the way that he also added in the various vines and the roots and some of the swamp weed or grass in the background as well, which kind of matches the environment they've chosen. But I thought that as a creation idea was very clever. And look at the, the legs. I really like the design of the legs. All the little individual leaves kind of coming out. That's really, really cool. The different layers as well, just gives it like another element of detail not to mention that's just the entire thing i've always been such a big fan of mavis creations and every time it surprises me which is how he tackles like different prompts they're just so creative and i just really really love you know these kind of things 
And next up, we're going to a rather creepy looking one by Poophead27. So this one makes me think of a much more kind of evil forest spirit. Probably because of the face and all the tendrils and roots and such. It is really, really cool though. And I can only imagine the patience I went into doing every individual root and make sure, or uh, every individual tendril. And making sure that things, you know, kind of work coherently, especially around the arms and the head. Not to mention where it grows into the tree on the back. This is a creature I can imagine being some kind of omen or like maybe defending the forest in some way. It has a very sinister feel and I do think it looks really, really cool. And come to think of it, sinister for a bear does actually fit quite nicely. If I can imagine any creature defending a forest, it would definitely be a bear. That is really, really cool. And next up, we've got this really cool piece by Guggenheim. I really, really like the just the choice of illustration here. It just looks exactly like something you'd see in a book, like a really, really old school encyclopedia. And as the text says, of all the creatures I've documented, none have proven to be more elusive than this one. The only details I've managed to obtain of this beast are from local tribespeople and my own hazy memory, from an unnamed explorer in Expedition 725. As I said, this is just really, really cool. It's the style that gets me more than anything else. I think it's absolutely nailed that style. Plus, I just like the concept itself. I especially really like the addition of the tree trunk on the back, the little, the little honey hive or beehive and the flowers. Just like a really nice kind of addition to it. But it really does give me like this vibe of like a big lumbering forest spirit. And if we look onto Guggenheim's second submission, they're really taking on the encyclopedia vibe or perhaps more like a expedition. One explorer's accounts for what they've seen onto the next level and I really, really love it. On the bottom left and the top right, we've got our previous two prompts, which were the Vulture Scorpion and the Komodo Orca, which is really cool. We've got a Devil Joe on the top left, which is really cool to see, and I love it in his style. On the bottom right, we've got a Draconis Jowie, which was a really cool surprise. And on the top middle, we've got Craig. I don't know who Craig is, but I love him. And next up by the Dragon Queen, we've got this really adorable one. What I really like about this one is the leaves that adorn the neck and the back, and especially the pattern that goes into it, as it would have been very easy just to have left it like as this as a singular green shade, but instead she's added some detail, nice little outline, nice little spots, and it just kind of adds so much more to it. Not to mention I just really love the little happy face. And following the Dragon Queen, we have Sly with their Venus flytrap bear. I love the face. I really, really love the face. It's a little bit uncanny, but it really fits very, very well. It makes for an adorable, more simplistic idea. And I also just love all the fly traps kind of on the back of the creature as well. And not to mention the shading, I really like all the grainy textures as well. And next up by Caliber Light, we've got the Leshy Bear, Guard of the Forest. This is really cool. So I've been really, really liking Caliber Light sketches a lot. He's got like, a absolutely gorgeous variety and there's just so many really awesome and elegant designs. I think this is probably the more creepier one I've seen come from Caliber. And it's really cool just to see that contrast and they've nailed it so well. I just love how ferocious it looks. It looks intimidating. Again, much more of a defender of the forest or some sort of protector. It looks very, very powerful. And the way that the branch is gonna come off from the back, just how they kind of look a bit spikier and almost like a cresting or some sort of display on its back, definitely makes it seem just larger and more intimidating. I think it's absolutely fantastic and yeah, really, really nicely done. And next up by Lantern Logic, we've got the Teddy Bear Choya, which is a grizzly bear and multiple different cacti. As they've stated, found wandering the desert either alone or with a mating cub. While they may stay in an oasis until the cubs are born, the cubs themselves aren't born with cacti, so usually the parents place regular cacti on its back, not to mention the prickly bears grown on a bear are perfectly edible. I just thought that was a really cool and interesting idea. I love the illustration, I really love all the cacti. I just love how they're drawn. It's actually just something really satisfying to look at, especially at the neck around the big bear and the prickly ones on the back of the cub. It's just really adorable, really sweet, it's a very creative idea. I also love the lighter outline of the large bear itself, it's a really cool shading choice and I think the coloration just looks beautiful and I think the whole thing comes together really really nicely. And next up by Sakasol is the orchid bear, sitting peacefully by the edge of a forest. This one's beautiful, this one is just so elegant, like it gives such a royal vibe. I know I've been saying things like you know spirits and defenders and guardians a lot today but this one, I think, just has such more of a almost queen-like vibe. It's absolutely beautiful. The use of an orchid was very, very creative, quite original, not to mention just the orchid itself being this great big thing around the neck. Again, it's just so, so creative and very, very well designed. I also like how the colours all match together, how the bear itself has these yellow and purple tones as well. Really complements together, not to mention the large green leaves draping down the back, sort of like a cloak. 
or a gown. As I said, the whole thing just looks absolutely stunning, really unique. Not to mention the grass texture as well, which I nearly missed. The grass is also very, very well drawn. And next up by Cinnamon Sage, we've got the Grizzly Bear and Spanish Moss Hybrid. This is sweet. I really like just the way it covers the eyes in the larger one. I don't know what it is. It just seems really nice and chill, very relaxed. It makes me think of like a bit of a swamp creature. I also just really like how the moss isn't secluded to the face, but also matches around the back and the underbelly as well. And how you can see it vary between the two next to the cup as well. It's very sweet. Well, it's a bit more of a simple idea. I do think that just a simple addition of it covering his eyes is just very, it's just very characteristic and really makes it stand out. And following Cinnamon Sage is the Plague Bringer with their deity. I must say, it was a very interesting choice having this creature kind of lurking in the lake. I don't think I've really seen much of that before in general, and it just kind of gives it like this whole extra dynamic. I also really like the contrast of all the flowers on the back and all of the hanging roots and reeds that come out from the bottom. And it makes sense when you think about it because the back is going to be what appears under the sun the most often. So it makes sense all the flowers are there, whereas all the roots kind of hang below it. But it gives that just a really, really cool and interesting appearance altogether. Not to mention the big glowing green eyes as well, makes it look very striking. And yeah, as I said, with it lurking the water being an interesting touch, I think that complements the hanging roots really nicely. And next up by Liam Placeball, we got the Spruce Bear. This... <laughs> is interesting. I do really appreciate the effort. So Liam did state that they're not very confident drawers. They're trying a bit of photoshopping. And to be fair, I respect what he tried to do here. And I must say that Liam, now that you have like a visual representation of your idea, I definitely would like to see you try sketching this. I think this could end up as a very interesting sketch. That definitely could be an avenue to help you draw with is to create your creature in Photoshop first and then draw that concept on paper afterwards. A lot of people do it with Spore. You definitely can do it with Photoshop and I'd really like to see you try. And next up we got Mihal, and as I mentioned the creature, the plant features consist of fur made out of moss and vines, leafy shaped ears and tail, and teeth like those seen in carnivorous plants. I really like the idea of a leafy tail, I don't know why, I just really really like that in particular. I also just really like all the various vines hanging around the creature, especially around the neck, but also around the sides and a bit around the arm. And the head, the head and the mouth, that is definitely quite ferocious. Imagining it as those needle-like teeth that you see cover as plants is really intimidating and it was just a really really cool touch in general. And next up we have a little theropods with their polar bear and 1989 Biolante. It did not occur to me, Biolante. That was a really, really unique idea, and Little Therapod here has done a, just a jaw-dropping job. I say that, and it looks like the jaw's actually dropping because of how open it is. But honestly, though, this is such a visually rich piece to look at. Even the background, I just like all the kind of splat on the background itself. But the creature, I don't know where to begin. Just everywhere I look, there's incredible detail. Whether it's all the leafy, kind of mossy, lighter red areas, or all the dark red thorns. The arms are just grossly armoured and they look amazing, and the heads, don't even get me started on the heads. This just looks really, really badass. I can't really find the words for this one. I just think that you've done an absolutely incredible job just executing your idea. It's so crisp, it's so clean, and I think it's really, really fantastic. Especially all the green saliva. <laughs> that is horrible and so well done. Next up by Untitled Goose, we got the brown bear and the purple loosestrife. Now, Untitled Goose did mention trying something new and they weren't very happy with it. That's understandable. I have to say, my dude, I commend you for trying something new in the first place. Sometimes experimenting and trying new things can be the scariest part and I really do commend you for going ahead with it and posting it, so thank you very, very much for doing that. In regards to your creature, what I will say is that I do really like all the various green parts and what I believe, I can see a couple of little dark lilies, especially around the back and the tips of the ears. And the tail is interesting, I'm not sure if it's intended or not, but the tail almost looks kind of torn in a way. So it kind of makes me wonder if this is some kind of battle-scarred creature. Bounding in next by Unstable Mystery is their Hydrangea Flower Bear, whose name I apologise if I did just butcher there. I know it's the name of a really pretty looking plant and it fits this really pretty looking creature. I really like all the colorations on this one. I also just really like the addition of the cyan eyes and ears. I think it's an interesting contrast. All the little bits of flowers as well, around the wrists, around the shoulders, around the head. The ears are back. They just look absolutely beautiful and very, very detailed, I must say. Very, very clean patterns, and I think they did a fantastic job doing those. Also, just the leaves and just the placement of the leaves as well almost look like jewellery in a way, and again, I think it just looks fantastic. Not to mention your method of how you distribute the various gradients and colours among the creature, where the lighter parts and the darker parts appear. The whole thing just looks like such a beautifully clean design, and again, just very, very sweet. <laughs> I think this one's absolutely lovely. And next up by Shunky, we have this awesome 3D piece. This is a damn good piece of Shunky. I, I would be very intimidated to try like all sorts of these leaves, especially around the branches, the end of the branches in fact. 
That's actually really, really cool. I can't imagine how long this must have taken to do in 3D, so I really do commend you on that. And also the asymmetry as well, such as the roots and vines around the belly, the chest, and the legs. Yeah, this is really, really impressive. I think this came out looking absolutely fantastic. And I, again, I just really like the idea of the big branch antlers. I think this is very, very creative. And next by the plague bringer is their vine bear. So this is the same concept as a deity one, but now we get to focus on the creature more itself. And like I mentioned before, I do just really like the variety of all the flowers on the back and the vines on the bottom leaf. What I especially really like about this second illustration of your concept is how you've really put attention to the flowers. You made them all point in different directions. And I think that's just such a easily missed detail that I really respect. And I also really like how the vines continue onto the creature's mouth and muzzle. As that, again, is something that a lot of people wouldn't really dare to do because it might, you know, quote unquote ruin the face. So again, I really respect you for doing that, and I think it's all come together looking fantastic. And next up, we get a small creation by Kavava Dare. I really love the shoulders. I don't know what it is, I've been really liking these large overlapping plates, it's like you especially see on the shoulders here, and a little bit of the leaves as well, just right next to it. It looks fantastic. I also really like the combination of parts around the mane. If you look very closely, around where the neck or the back of the jaw would be, you can actually see a combination of the hair like mites, that one creeping cute mohawky part, and the grass parts, and they all just transition together really, really beautifully, really elegantly, in such a clean colour transition. And that's something really difficult to pull off, especially the hair like mites. As much as I like using that part, it's such an annoying thing to texture with. So I really, really like just the way you pulled it off. It's fantastic. Not to mention the other various pieces of the creature as well, all your different usage of parts too, such as the branches, the leaves, all the moss around the arms and legs, your actual use of flower parts in a way that looks really, really good. I hate those flower details and you've pulled it off fantastically. This is really, really impressive and I think you've done an absolutely stellar job. And next up we've got another small creation by Cod Gamer. Rather more on the simplistic side and I think it looks really cute. I like the big green eyes, definitely gives it a spiritual vibe. I again really like the tree-like antlers and also the tufts of fur. And Cod Gamer did also request to include this rather funny little creation of you guys' entertainment. And last but absolutely not least by Ratiosaur Dinus is the Bear Palm. I really like this one, its face looks sinister. It, it kind of reminds me I've been saying spirits a lot. I'm, I've always meant spirits in regards to like some kind of forest protector entity. This one makes me think of a more ghostly kind of spirit. And it's really interesting. Like, I can imagine it having like a bit of a dead bark texture. Its face looks almost like a bit of a scary mask. And this is all especially amplified by the large, very torn palm leaves. And it looks like it has six legs. I'm not entirely sure, but the entire thing just looks really, really cool. It does look kind of scary, and I think it's just really, really interesting. Not to mention a shading technique as well, especially around the arms and legs. And that I have to do it then for part one of this prompt. As always, everyone, thank you all so much for taking part. It's been an absolute blast. Part two will be arriving next week. So if you want to get your own submissions in, check out the screen right now. You can post your submissions on a Discord server. You can email them directly to me. You can reply in the comment section down below. Or you can message me on Twitter and DeviantArt. Wherever you can get a hold of me, that's where you can post your submissions and I'll include them in the next video. As always, everyone, thank you all so very, very much. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Cheers.